Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. I am Blake Rudis, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use Topaz Adjust 5 to create more dramatic high-pass sharpens. Sounds kind of cool, huh? I, I bet you're interested. If you've never used Topaz Adjust 5, it's a great uh, tool to add to your post-processing workflow to make more dramatic images, whether it be adding a vignette, um, adding a sepia tone, or making a grungy HDR image out of something that ne wouldn't necessarily be. So the first thing I'm going to do to make a high-pass sharpen with Topaz Adjust is duplicate the background layer by pressing Control and J. Now I'm going to go to Filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Adjust 5. This is not normally in Photoshop. You have to purchase it. Uh, we purchased the Topaz website. I have a link on the blog if you would like to go to that. Topaz Adjust 5 is a plugin uh, that goes right into Photoshop, and that's why it's so great for your, your post processing workflow. It works seamlessly right in Photoshop. So, to get uh, the more dramatic uh, high pass sharpen, high pass sharpens are all about, in my opinion, detail, bringing out the detail in an image to uh, making make it more sharp. But you can also bring out the detail in an image to make the detail more dramatic by using a stronger high pass sharpen. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create a stronger base for our high pass sharpen. So to do that, I'm going to go into the HDR collection. I'm going to go to Dynamic Pop 2 and use that as my base to, to add on to. And it's already pretty much uh, solid. You can see the before and the after. It has really brought out the detail. And I, I wouldn't normally just process my image like this and let it go because um, it's too much in certain areas. But let's go to the global adjustments and go to details. Now we're going to boost the strength up just a little bit of those details to really start to bring this stuff out. And then detail boost a little bit. Don't go too far because if you do, you can you can really bring Topaz adjust uh, too far and, and to the a limit that you don't want to go to. 1.04 is probably about as far as I'll take that on the detail boost. And that's about it. I don't want to mess with too many other things on here, so I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. There's a lot of other features inside Topaz Adjust that are great. Um, I've done a whole tutorial on just Topaz Adjust 5, so look for that on the blog if you're interested. So now to make this a high pass sharpen, we need to change it to soft light. And I change it to soft light first so I can see what's happening with the image when I bring it into. Um, the high pass stage. Actually, before that, let's go ahead and show you one other thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and desaturate this first, make it a black and white. And to do that, I'm going to press Control Shift U. And the reason for that is uh, during the high pass process, as you drag the high pass um, slider, it starts to bring out color that you wouldn't want necessarily applied to the image. I'll show you that in a second. So go ahead, filter, go to other, and go to high pass. We're going to make this high pass anywhere between 8 and 9 for these larger size images. If I'm working with a JPEG, I'm going to go ahead and put it down to like 3, 4, maybe 6 at the max. Um, but when I'm working with a, a TIFF or uh, an image 16-bit TIFF, I'm going to go with about 8, 8 to 9. Press OK. So now we're going to change that to soft light. And you can see it's really brought out the detail in the background here. Some places a little too much more than more than others. But let's look at a regular high pass. So I'm just going to go ahead and press Control J. And for the sake of showing you what a high pass looks like with the color, we'll go high pass. And you see this color that I'm talking about here. You're starting to bring in color to your high pass. We don't want color in the high pass. We don't want it to manipulate our color at all. We just want it to be a, a grayscale uh, booster, essentially. So I can press Control Shift U now and also desaturate it and then go to soft light. And you can also make that hard light or linear light or any light that you would like to, but I tend to go with soft light because um, you don't want to over, over sharpen something. So that's the original high pass, and then here's our new high pass. Let's go ahead and look at the detail a little bit closer with that. So take off our, there's the original high pass from the image, and then here's our high pass from Topaz Adjust 5. It's just, it's just a little bit more, just taking it a little bit farther on the detail side. But when you get into that, you also when you start doing this uh, high pass, you start to you don't want to high pass the areas that are bringing out like the the background dark areas should be black. They shouldn't be uh, pixelated like this. So we can just go ahead and add a mask. Let's go ahead and delete this. Add a mask to our 
topaz adjust high pass and we can simply paint in those areas if you need to get to the paint it should automatically go to black and white but if it doesn't you can press d to go to the default colors which are white and black in your palette and you can press x and then b for brush and you can start painting away now i'm using a wacom tablet so it makes it a little bit easier for me and if you want to see what's going on while you're painting other than looking at the pixels go away you can press the key next to the right bracket key i think it's a forward slash maybe a backslash whatever uh, but it's next to the right bracket key above the enter key Press that and that'll give you a little red haze over the areas that you're painting in uh, for your uh, for your uh, mask. Sorry. It's hard for me to talk, concentrate, and paint at the same time. And the great thing about working with a Wacom tablet is that you can get really close to this stuff and not be affecting it because it's all based on pressure. So the pressure that I apply is not necessarily being applied to the architecture even though I'm getting really close to it because it's, it works just like an airbrush if you ever airbrushed before uh, if not, if you ever used a can of spray paint it's simply the same thing uh, the more pressure, the closer you get to it uh, with the spray paint can the more saturated that color is going to be and that's basically the pressure that you're working with with the pen I never tagged before, I really haven't I'm not very good at tagging but I have worked with an airbrush Okay. So, if you press that, press that backslash key again, or forward slash key, whatever, I'm not sure what, I think that's the forward slash key. It's above the enter key. Again, then you can see what your uh, mask is doing. And if you'd like to see in real time, turn the mask on and off, you can press shift on the mask and turn the mask off, and press shift on the mask and back on. If you'd like to see how that works on another image, here's the image from the most recent concert that I've done. Uh, this is another, the exact same thing I just did on the image before uh, with the high pass, but it really brings out that armor a little bit more. Uh, it's almost uh, impeccable what it does to the detail in that, in that metal. But I don't like what it's doing to the drapery on the horse. So just like I did in the last one, if I wanted to mask out the background and not apply that sharp that sharpen to the background, I can just add a mask to this press B for brush and paint in with my brush in the areas that I don't want this to affect because that drapery looks muddy when you put that effect on there so I didn't really like that too much so that's using Topaz Adjust 5 in a nutshell for high pass sharpening um, again with Topaz it goes beyond a high pass sharpen that's just a creative way that I use Topaz Adjust in my workflow to dramatically uh, I guess make more dramatic high pass sharpens than you would normally see with the detail it really brings out that detail a little bit more thank you for watching my tutorial on everydayhdr.com again i am blake rudis and if you have any questions about this you can email me at everydayhdr at gmail.com almost forgot my own email address thank you very much take care have a great weekend i will see you next week or you will hear me next week i won't see anybody take care bye